Okay, we welcome all the mobile appers tuned in with us today as we preach the gospel of Christ and fellowship around the revelation of the mystery. And what a wonderful fellowship this is, fellowship that's not found in the world of religiosity. Most are void, void of the but now truth of the gospel of our salvation. And here we are in a time when buildings are nothing short of a a social gathering place. And it's increasingly getting harder to find a place to worship and to fellowship with like-minded believers And it's why most are staying home these days. What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, right? What communion hath light with the darkness of infidels? In this dispensation, infidels are those who deny the authority of Paul's my gospel. The other day, uh, my wife sends me a text that said, take a look at what some quote right divider is teaching now. It was a Facebook post from a fellow who posted a passage from Ephesians 4. There where it speaks of how some were given to be apostles, evangelists, pastors, prophets, and teachers, and so forth, to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry and to edify the body of Christ. Underneath it, uh, this fellow says, Preachers are to edify the body of Christ and not preach to the lost. It's the Holy Spirit's job to save people. And then he said, Unfortunately, most did not get the memo. After seeing her text, I thought to myself, how arrogant and foolish for a so-called grace-believing preacher to publicly say such a thing, to take a beautiful Pauline passage completely out of its context. But this is not an isolated event. This sort of foolishness we deal with daily. In the last couple of years, it's, it's gotten worse, and we're being flooded with listener emails and voicemails asking us to address these things. He says most didn't get the memo. Hey, there is no such memo. Buildings everywhere, worldwide, full of needy people, spiritually bankrupt, packed to the gills with the religious and lost, and this joker's telling us, don't go to them with the gospel because you're only supposed to edify the body of Christ. Your job's not to preach to the lost. Wrong, wrong, and wrong again. Yes, it's true. It's very true that we're to edify and build one another up. But as ambassadors, our ministry extends beyond the four walls. Our ministry is never to, well, at least our truth time ministry. I'll I'll speak for ourselves. We're without borders, and we make no apology for that. Our ministry extends beyond social status. It extends beyond skin color, political party, straight or gay. As ambassadors for Christ, we have a message for you. Come on in. Stay a while. I've got the best news you're ever going to hear. That on the cross, God was in Christ where he stopped imputing trespasses and reconciled you, reconciled me. He reconciled the entire world unto himself. And this news should be evident. I mean, any Bible, any person that says they've read the Bible should know that this is why no one receives his wrath for their sins today. If this was not true, if the truth time message of reconciliation was not true, the whole world would be under God's wrath. But during this time of grace, God has issued a worldwide invitation for all to be saved. He's holding back the day of wrath. And it's a crying shame that we have people proclaiming to understand the difference between prophecy and mystery who are not only not willing to reach out to others, but from the looks of it, most are not even equipped to. They don't have the right message. This preacher here, could he could care less about the lost and goes on social media to brag about it, putting his ignorance on full display. He could care less because he's careless, careless with his words. I think it's he who didn't get the memo, the grace memo from the Apostle Paul. Grace and religion don't mix. These religious denominational preachers and even some of the religious grace preachers, while claiming to teach from Paul's epistles, have their followers under a form of bondage. Teaching things they ought not. Teaching them to in-reach, but never how to out-reach. Here we are, ministers of reconciliation, equipped with the only gospel that saves today. And we got jokers like this telling us to avoid the worldwide denominational system. There they are, kept under Israel's time-past instructions, religious and lost, 
But hey, just avoid them. Avoid them at all costs, because this fellow says we're supposed to edify the body of Christ only and not preach to the lost. Because it's the Holy Spirit's job, he said, to save people. Yes, yes it is. But how does that happen? The Holy Spirit saves people through His Word. And the unsaved won't hear His Word if we avoid them. Unless folks like you and I, uh, if we don't take them the good news, nobody will. The good news of their salvation, if we don't deliver it to them, they'll die religious and lost right there in those buildings where they're being taught to grudgingly tithe instead of cheerfully give, taught to set their minds on earthly things, not heavenly things, to ask for forgiveness they already have, to mix works with faith for salvation, to mix prophecy with mystery. It's a crying shame is what it is. I was reading through Isaiah earlier when a verse stuck out and caught my eye. Chapter 59, verse 2. Here the prophet says, Your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Now, this is likely to be taught this Sunday morning somewhere, but does it sound like your mail? If you answer yes, it's likely you're not saved. If you've been getting your mail from the right mailbox, you know, you know that your iniquities do not separate you from God. Because God's not imputing them. This is good news you're not going to hear from a limited forgiver because they don't know how to handle their Bible. They suffer from from my a severe case of myopia. And when they open the word, the word of God, they miss it. They miss this. Reconciliation has become sort of a byword to them. But you can't be saved without it. Some people have the gospel over here and reconciliation over here. Hey, the reconciliation is the gospel. The gospel is reconciliation. It tells you what Christ did on the cross on your behalf so that God could reconcile himself to you. And he resurrected on the third day to assure you that payment was made and accepted. As we've been saying for so many years, if religion has left you with more questions than answers, we're glad you're here. I'm here to call out and charge all the religious spin doctors, call them out and charge that they teach no other doctrine than that of Paul's. I'm here to warn you of the uh, 1 John 1, 9 limited forgivers. Confess your sins to get them forgiven. Nope. I'm warning you against the Acts 2.38 limited forgivers. Repent and be baptized for forgiveness. Nope. The 2 Chronicles 7.14. Yeah, how about those guys? Limited forgivers is what they are. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray, and turn from their wicked ways, then, then they can get forgiven. Nope, nope, and nope again. That's the wrong mailbox. Instructions that aren't for you. Yet multitudes attend an event every year called the National Day of Prayer. And you know what they do? They use 2 Chronicles 7.14 as their banner verse. An event that I think happens uh, every year around September. But can you believe that? Can you believe that the religious system has blinded millions upon millions from seeing that No amount of calling on the name or no amount of humbling yourself, no amount of prayer and turning from your wicked ways can get sins forgiven that are not being imputed. This is nonsense. I'm here to charge you today to to keep a close eye, keep a close eye out for the Mark 329 limited forgivers. You know them good old boys, don't you? He that blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. Ah, he that blaspheme hath never forgiveness. Wrong. That one's not being imputed either. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, God made Jesus to be sin for us. That includes the sin of blasphemy. How's that difficult? I charge you to beware of the Matthew 6.14. If you have not first forgive others, then God can't forgive you, limited forgivers. They're out there too, everywhere, on every corner. Watch for the uh, Matthew 24 endure until the end, guys. Yeah, those limited forgivers. The say the sinner's prayer, limited forgivers. The enter the confessional booth, limited forgivers. 
it was um, j- just yesterday, heard a, heard a prominent pastor of a very large uh, church. He placed the John chapter 1, verse 12 stumbling block right there in front of his audience. And there were hundreds in attendance and, and no doubt thousands watching by television. And what do you think his false teaching is doing? <laughs> Causing them to stumble all over themselves. And those who believe that John 1.12, I don't care how good they are, come to church every Sunday, do good, charitable people, pay their tithes, vote for all the right candidates, so they think. I don't care. Hey, if they believe John 1.12 is in their salvation mailbox, they're going to miss heaven. John said, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that what? Believe on his name. That's not the gospel today. Is that a false gospel? Is this a false gospel? Truth times uncovered here in the Bible? Nope. But it's a misplaced gospel is what it is, which ultimately makes it a false gospel if it's used today. Time passed, but now ages to come. Time passed, but now ages to come. Timelines in the Bible that so many ignore, and then we have some that know of these timelines and still don't understand what happened on the cross in time past. It happened on the cross in time past and revealed to Paul in the but now. Some's going to get it, some can't. But we're doing our best to get you over here in the but now dispensation of grace. Over here in the Flip Wilson's church of what's happening now. Paul's epistles is where you'll find the but now gospel for today. It's where you'll find your daily marching orders. It's where you'll find your identity. Do you realize this? Hopefully so, but most don't. We're faced with a real identity crisis, and and people don't know who they are or where to go read about themselves in the Bible. And this Sunday morning, oh, you can watch your neighbor pull out of their driveway, go to a building, and, and they'll fellowship there with a group, a group of others who don't know who they are either. Now, later in this dude's message that I I saw. He said, quote, if you simply will be honest with God, confess and forsake all your sins, admit that you're a sinner and promise to stop your sinning, God will forgive you. Oh, my. A convoluted lie making itself manifest right from this preacher's mouth. Coming from someone who has allowed the God of this world through the religious system to blind him from the light of the glorious gospel, the but now gospel of his salvation. He's ignorant of the cross. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved. It is what? The power of God. Any man that would tell others that they have to confess and forsake all their sins before God will forgive them is a man who's fallen into divers' deceptions. He hasn't forsaken all his sins, yet he's up there telling others to do so. You've got to be kidding. And using his large ministerial platform to, to deceive. Hurt people hurt people. And deceived people deceive people. Pews filled with warm bodies who are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hey, listen, doing what we do here at Truth Time Radio as ministers of reconciliation, not a day goes by that we don't receive some wrong-headed attempt from someone offering to service up a big bite of their religious cake. So you know what we did? Years ago, we decided to, to fast from man's vain imaginations and misplaced teachings, and instead, feast. Yeah, we traded the fast for the feast. Feast off the unperverted word of God. And we encourage you to do the same. Grace and peace.